Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Ah! What do you think about the AC? Oh, turn off the AC? Yeah, give, give uh, it a push. Be upset. Give People it a push. get very upset. Oh, God. There we'll we go. see what Shelby thinks. There it is. Okay, well, it'll be toasty. That's all right. Is it centered? Because I feel like I'm dead smack in front of the camera. I, sh- I could rock uh, rock that uh, lens around. What do you call it? The uh, the viewer. The swivel? The swivel view. You're saying it looks good, though. Oh, yeah. Well, the cat looks majestic, like pride rock. Isn't this crazy about the cat? I was just thinking about this about the cat. So this cat mm-hmm. will never be anywhere but this house. We've tried. Hates it. What do you mean? Like, uh, go for a walk? We put it on a leash. We brought it to the roof. You know what it is? It's lived with a ceiling its whole life. It's lived in a tiny New York apartment. You bring it on the roof, it's going, it's got vertigo. It's The sky is falling. It doesn't Whoa. get it. We took him on the side. We took him to the park once. He just clings to you like, it's a, the sun. like a nom vet. Cats don't get vertigo. It's the sun. It's too bright, I think. Ah, uh, well. Don't you think? Maybe? I don't well, know. If I brought him out at night, I don't think he'd, he'd come to life either. He's he's a bitch. No, night cats. Not cat cat night. Isn't that something? Cat night nip. Cat, cat, cat nap. I think cats are night animal aren't they night or something isn't there something nocturnal about... yeah but i thought there was something with cats night vision or ah. am i crazy do all the cats like the night I like think, a... you're thinking of a bat i think you're right i think i'm thinking of a bat a wuhan yeah they like uh they like to sleep all day and fuck all night you know they're in their cave upside down their parents get killed they fight crime but i think cats don't like light because they have squinty eyes they're always squinting true you never see an eye with big a cat with big round eyes no they're mostly asian but i'll tell you i read a lot about cats when we bought this numbskull and they absorb the sun's heat and it gives them energy that's why you see a cat on the window. They're taking in some... That's how they get their oh. their Red Bull or meth. Like us with vitamin Dizzle. Yes. Similar thing. He needs the D. I wonder. You should get like a little tanning bed in here for the cat. Mm. But I, I don't think it's the... Ver- I think it's the... It, it goes out there and probably the wind. Yeah. The yeah. bug. Maybe it's like sensory overload because there's flies right. and bugs and mosquitoes. And, and You know, if we did it every day and conditioned and conditioned and waterboarded and shampooed and conditioned, it might be better, but it's once in a blue anal, so he's going, ah, there's a bug. What is that? A bird? Is that a tree? Here he's the king of the castle. Yeah, that makes sense. He's very sleepy. It's a real sleepy cat. 20 hours a day, they said on the uh, Wikipedia. What? Yeah. Now, what is it? Hit me straight. I mean, your wife's in the other room, but hit me straight. You like this thing? It can't be fun. It's sleeping 20 <laughs> hours a day. You got to feed it. It's long. It scratches. It's not giving you any love. I'll tell you, there's moments. I mean, I've been here. I got a Domino's pizza deliver. It meets you at the door. It, it cuddles you at night. It. You play with it, you throw a spring and plays catch. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. It gives you a lick every, you know, once every six months it'll lick you. And uh, it just gives the house a little life. Ah, a little life. You know, you can be in this apartment and the the, the sun is down, the TV's broken, you got music on, you're sitting there with your cat, you're reading a book, drinking a whiskey. I don't know. You feel like an old sailor. Nah, the cat sucks. You're all wrong. You know what you're talking about. But a dog, I mean, I hate to do a cats and dogs bit here. Never been done. But a dog does feel like some love. I, I go to Louis's house. He's got a dog. It pukes on my foot. But it really, it leans. It puts weight on you. It's genuinely happy to see you. This cat is just a lump on a log with a bunch of fur and a blanket. I know. It's a big, hairy puss. But I'm telling you, it was sitting over there. We start podcasting. Look, he's social. He comes and hangs out, but he's not too much. That's- you don't want the dog. The dog's going to be sniffing your package. Licking your nips and uh, you know trying to get what, what is that? Is that a coffee? Ah, it's all over the coffee, and then it's licking you, and you got to push it away. Hate the push away. Well, cats are very zen. Yeah, they don't react much to anything. Even the door, a dog with a doorbell, it goes nuts. It jumps uh, on everything. It goes crazy. But a cat doesn't even give a fuck about a doorbell. 
No, no. It's more nervous. Like, who's that? It's like, it's, I tell you, it's like a drug addict. Interesting. But well. You ever, you ever go to your friend's house as a kid? He's got the dog. And it's, it's, it's this tall. You're eight years old. You open the door. It goes, ah! And you go, whoa. And they go, it's fine. He likes you. You're like, he's pawing my face. Of he's course. Bloody. I'm terrified of dogs. I used to do a bit. I'm afraid of dogs. I'm afraid of people that aren't afraid of dogs. The ah. people that just grab the dog and start shaking another dog. But. I don't understand the people that don't buy a little dog. And I know I'm going to get shit. You're a cuck. I'm a liberal. I'm gay. My father's an asshole. What, like a chihuahua? I hate a chihuahua. Chihuahua oh, yeah. is the worst thing on earth. Yeah, that, that was is, a tough. I'd rather hey, 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 a, a rapist over a chihuahua in my here, house. Here, here. You're, you're a Kiro rapist. But like a Yorkie, I want a dog that I can just <laughs> scoop up and, and we run. We go for it. These big dogs, especially in Manhattan, and, and they're like show dogs. They just want people. People just want to show off that they have money in a big yes, house. Yes, yes. It's like a little horse. Exactly. It's just massive fucking, a classic dog, I call it, like a golden retriever. Right. In Manhattan, it's so strange, and you're like, you're doing a disservice to this lovely animal. Look at the cat. It's all... Yeah, like, like, like you what, that? how about the Great Dane? Like, oh, it's got to, first of all, you got to get great in there. Like, uh, you had to just slide that in. It's a Dane, cook. It's a regular Dane, yeah. It's not great. Fine, the, Dane. Judy Dench. Dane, okay, Judy Dane. Dench. But either way, it's too much. You're ruining the animal's life. Uh, I don't care if you got a penthouse in the Upper West. You're looking out over the, the East River or whatever. Or is that, uh, is that East? Yeah, East River. No, no. East Upper side. West would be the oh, Upper uh, West. Hudson. Hudson. Yes. News. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's still, it's got to gallop. It's got to run and chase a butterfly and roll in a meadow and lick its ass. That seems fun. Like, I go to Borderland State Park in Massachusetts, and you see these people, there's a whole dog area, and they take a Frisbee, and they just whoop, they whip it, and that dog just runs oh. like a fucking uh, a dog. Yes, a Jumps gallop. up and just catches it in its teeth and lands and brings it right back to you and drops it. A lot of dogs I've met, they never drop. My sister's dog. Drop. The, the ball, the oh, stick. Oh, they don't drop. There's a, a Louis dog. There's a lot of like just they stand there. They they get the ball. They bring it back to you. They won't let go. And then you got to put your fingers. Uh, How about the people that are comfortable putting their fingers in a dog's mouth? I know that saliva. It's so slick and sticky and gay. I hate it. It's it's bad news. And then even even when they do drop it, you pick it up and it's it's like an old puss. It's wet and hairy. Yeah, and then you throw it and it has that. That yeah, spray the little like the Sonic the Hedgehog spritz. Then there's always that one guy who goes, you know, a dog's mouth is actually cleaner than uh, oh. a can of tomato soup. And you go, all right, well, why don't you French kiss the the poodle and I'll I'll eat the soup. I, how about this? I was talking to Ethan Simmons Patterson. You know that guy? I don't know. I keep seeing him. He seems like a hunk of a black man. Well, he's got a hell of an arm. It's a big, solid, thick arm. Ladies like an arm. He's got no social media. What? Yeah, he's old school. He's just like a he's like an eighties comic. He just like goes, it. does the set, and heads home, and that's that. This is my kind of guy. Yeah, well, he's got uh, big, big old arms, and he's smart as a whip. This guy. He used to work in some kind of lab. I wasn't listening when he started. You know, when someone starts talking, you're like, ah, I don't give a shit, and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, what's that? Yeah, you do give a shit. He worked at some bullshit. I don't know where he worked, but he was saying Boeing? the what Boeing? Boeing. That seems like a smart place to work. You know, it's, it's like airplanes. engineering or or air air aircraft, anything with aircraft. I'm like, holy shit! I don't know. I think it was some lab shit. They test something. Maybe I, I don't know. I wouldn't know if you said it. Lab. I don't know. Well, you got the uh, the Wuhan lab. Some kind of lab, like a lab. You know, you got the, the Bunsen the burners, beaker. And the beacons, and the yes. whatever. Beacon beaker. Theater. Beaker. What's a beacon? That's a light. That's a light to go. <laughs> We're over right. here. And a beacon is like a light, the light you put on top of the cop car. That's a beacon also. That's a siren. No, the siren's, no, the, siren's the noise. The noise. A beacon's the little, you know, the co- like Mark Ruffalo, and he's got the suit, and he goes, all right, Hudson, we got a 419. Oh, Boop. And then they do a U-turn, and they drive man. off. How bad do you want to be that guy? with the They're putting the thing on there. The light bulb, yeah. And what does it do? Does it stick? What is it, it's gum? Sti- I think it's got the suction. Suction never works ever, though. Not well, in a car. I've never seen that thing slide. I think the cops have the good stuff, and they sell us the horse shit. There should be a movie where the thing slides off immediately, and that it swings down, great. and hits somebody. He's like, oh, fuck, the thing never works. And then he just has to hold it. He gives it to his partner, and the partner has to hold it out the window. That's a naked gun right there. That's a scene. Now you got a scene. Now you're Frank Drebin. But yeah, how bad did you want the, the sticky light and then this thing? That fucking gun, the the holster that went over here, and the gun stayed right. right. Oh, that's the man. Ruffalo bullet. What is it? Bullet. 
the film. Steve ah, McQueen. He yes. had the thing with the gun and oh, the thing. Oh, I want to keep my wallet and my phone in one of those. I love that thing. Yeah, it'd be fun. It, it just suspenders with no jacket with yes. the, the gun on there. I just want to wear a gun. Because you want... Well, yeah, yeah. Give me a gun. I want to shoot some people. But it's just fun when you have the option with a cop. You know, you don't want to be in the blade, the Cops blue... Are- the cop shit, yeah. You don't want to be in the blue. You know, hey, blue sucks. You know, the the guy twirling the nightstick. Oh, where you going, boy? The beat. You, know, you don't want to be on the beat. Cop. No beat. I don't want to be a gumshoe or whatever. I want to be. Uh, I want to be the guy in the trench coat with the bra gun, brazier, and then the sticky. Because now you have an option. Yes. I'm not a cop. Cop. Yes, exactly. And I've been saying it for years. The sexiest look on a woman: mm. jeans, no shirt, what? topless with jeans. What are you kidding? You ever see that? Well, I'm talking about cops here. I know. I'm set, well, I'm setting something up. I see. It's the a setup. setup. <laughs> I'm it's setting up. That's the sexiest look on a woman. Jeans, no shirt. Okay. Sexiest look on a man. Suit, gun on hip. Ooh. I'm saying this is my thoughts. That's I'm not good. saying I'm anything. I don't know nothing from Adam, <laughs> but I'm saying a lady with jeans. You got a lady with jeans over here sitting like this, you know, jeans, uh, topless. Okay, well, maybe okay. not like this topless because you see the fat roll. Yeah, they clench together there. If a woman has an ounce of fat, I think she should be put to death. But No doubt about it. A man, you see him when he comes home, he's got the suit. Hey, honey, how was your day? He takes off the uh, jacket. He's got suit with a gun. Yeah. It's it's business and, and you know, Pleasure. business or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And the lady's got her jeans, gap jeans, maybe a pair of heels, no shoes. She, I mean, uh, no. Uh, shirt, she yeah. forgot that. That's that's a sexy couple. To me, I'm with you. That is a hot couple. I don't know why she's shirtless with jeans on, but I'll take it. Uh, Throw some heels on. The, heels under a jean. Heels and a jean is I good, because that's business and, and cash at yes. the same time. And I like, if we're going out, I like, women always do the dolled up, the fluffy bullshit, the tutu, the the one one, but... A, t- a tight T-shirt mm-hmm. tucked in to some tight jeans yes. with heels. That's all you need. Maybe a brown belt. Because oh! the belt gives you a little activity. I love the snap when you open the belt. That yes. Like a cock yes. goes, you know, it's like a, a little belt snap. You unbelt the belt. The problem is with jeans. They don't come off sexy because they always catch at the heel. You got to yeah, like pull that leg that's up. That's true. You yeah. jimmy it. That's why sometimes how to just yank them down like a fourth grader peeing and just Railer from behind. Yeah, but that's tough because you're really going to spread the asshole then. Sure. Because the legs are not too whatever. Oh, yeah. They're but not you too love far apart. Kicking those feet apart and Which really. What a cop does. You're doing the search. That's a good point. Search ah. and seizure. Mm. Seize, seize her. Ah. Um, you ever Julio. had a seizure? Have I had a seizure? Yeah. No. What am uh, I, an asshole? Were, well, <laughs> well, I used to work at a restaurant. Oh, no, the buttons. Easy the there, Dickless. The Get off the buttons, you douche. That's a good name for a cat, buttons. Buttons. But the uh, I used to work at a restaurant for 10 years, and uh, one of the kids was epileptic, the bus boy. Loser. So every now and then, he'd be carrying a tray of dishes and just go like, <laughs> and they would all fall, and then you wanted to yell at him, but you couldn't because he was a mutant. Wow, what a nerd. I know, I know. Get it together. I'd, one guy had to reach in and hold his tongue. Because he was gonna, they bite the tongue off when they oh, right. spaz out. I've seen the wooden spoon. Yes, they put a spoon in there. Yeah, that was old school. This guy, you know, he's the kind of guy who takes a ball out of a dog's mouth because he put his <laughs> fucking hand right in that guy's mouth and saved his tongue. If the new school has grabbed the tongue, we got to go back to the old school because wooden spoon is better than a tongue grab. I guess, but what, you know, you're at a house party or or a, <laughs> you know, you don't have a spoon. Who am I, Aunt Jemima? I don't know. <laughs> My Betty Crocker. Who's got a wooden spoon on, on hand? I know, but his tongue is so slippery. I thought that if, if you grabbed my tongue, I would just pull that's it right true, back. That's true. That's true. It's a slick tongue. It's a slippery tongue. A silver tongue. Don't you love a, a, going back to ladies, a tongue? Sometimes I think making, I think I could come from making out. Wow. I mean, the make out is the hottest thing. I mean, like, if, if I was like, some woman was like, hey, we can make out for 10 minutes or you can see my butthole, I, I'd, I'd make out with her butthole. Wait. Mm, wait a minute. <laughs> I, 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 I'm saying, sorry, I got excited. I, I just think making out is like hotter than, uh, almost hotter than a blowjob. Oh, this is, what are you, nine? I'm confused here. You're going to take a make out over a beach? Next yeah. you're going to tell me like dry humping. A beach is like, she's down there. It's not intimate. It's nice, but I, I'd like to see a face. I'd like to see a tit. You can barely see any tits unless you're like 69. 69ing is greater than BJ to me. 
Because I got I like a nice twat in my mouth, but I do too. A makeout is so intimate. The tongue on the thing. Sure, sure. It's just hot. The lips on lips. You, well, let me ask you this, there, fatty. When you're making out with a broad, do you close the eyes? What do you picture? Are you picturing what the tongues are doing? That's what I picture. I don't know that I'm picturing too much. I'm just feeling. I'm not visualizing so much. I'm really make out with me for a second. I'll tell All you right. what I see. I think I'm not. I'm not picturing the tongues. I'm feeling the tongues. I no picture, picture the tongues. I don't know why. I picture them going like tentacles in, a, in an ocean, just jizzing all over each other. I don't know why. Uh, who pictures tongues? I mean, I picture you know. Uh, I speak in tongues. Nolan Ryan throwing a no hitter. Whatever I picture, it doesn't matter. I can feel the tongue. I feel. I mean, I feel too, but uh, you, I, you don't picture what, what your dick's seeing inside the uh, clam? Not mid-thing. During that, I'm picturing myself also getting fucked by like her brother. Oh, Something nice. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Something Boy, fun. you got a vivid on that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just think of my mom. I don't know where you're getting the, the brother. What if she doesn't have a brother? You're, you're like inventing characters. I come up with any brother off the street. Hey, brother. Sure. Um, Patterson. But uh, New Jersey? No, Ethan. Oh, Ethan Simmons <laughs> Patterson. I forgot about it. Oh, I never even got to the story. Oh, wow. We went off on the tongue fuck. Jesus. How did we get there? But yeah, Lab. the tongue in the butthole is fine. I've, t- I've told you, I read a few, because women are so secretive, you fucking skirts. They like when you jam your tongue right into the uh, love hole. Oh, my God, of course. But nobody tells you these things. And then women go, men have no idea. I'm like, well, tell us, you crazy coos. We're dying to help you. Well, every Cosmo article. No, not Cosmo. A Sports Illustrated should do like a Cosmo mm. thing. Like a, like a 28 things a lady will do to, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, because you got a bunch of men's eyeballs. Why don't you pump them with some actual valuable info? Isn't that what Maxim was? Is Maxim still around? Uh, nah, I think it got too, you know, non feminist y or some lady with boots kicked it off. I don't know. It, it's over, I think. Remember that was a big deal? We got Maxim Bjorn, our manager, got oh, a little blurb. Yeah. Were you in there? I don't think so. Oh, that's tough. Ouch. Yeah, that one stung. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you did. Maybe. I think it was a little blurb, and it said, you know, my favorite ice cream is chocolate, and then it was a little thing. Oh, all right, all right. I don't remember the chocolate question. <laughs> I hope I said something funnier than that. But I'll take it. Send me a copy, will you? Well, my thing, I didn't. I, I was so fucking stunted, my growth in social media and show business. Still is. But one of the questions was, favorite app? Mm. And at the time, I didn't have a smartphone. I didn't know what an app was. Uh, so I thought it meant appetizer. This is like embarrassing. Yeah. And so I wrote... I still see guys doing that bit, by the way, and you're like, come on. I wrote Jägermeister because ah. I thought that was a funny joke. Ah. Thinking like, what's your favorite appetizer? Jägermeister. I and like I was like, it. I put this funny joke down and people kept reading it being like, what's the Jägermeister app? Oh. And I was like, it's a joke. Instead of mozzarella sticks... And I was just that retarded that I didn't know what an app was. Right. It was embarrassing. So it, it, and it, they printed it. It says you can go find it on whatever the Google. Favorite Joe List, comedian, yada, yada. Favorite app, Jägermeister. Yeah. I don't even know if there's a Jägermeister app. It's funny. I, I'm sure there is. But it's funny because uh, I see you as like a smart guy and a you know, thoughtful guy. Thank you. Hip to the grindstone or ear to the uh, ear to the name or whatever it is but you're always so down on yourself and I'm like why is he always down on himself he's always got great points he's always got a good Thank good you. head on his shoulders on a swivel whatever you want to call it but then you hear about this shit and you go no wonder he hates himself he's a fucking retard I'm a moron well I'm just bad with the social media I get people email me every day like can I be your social media manager it's embarrassing too. you're humiliating yeah. they're like look at your friends you fucking piece of shit and I'm like I like the sunset shut up and the worst is when they go, you could be making all kinds of money if you just did this app and tweaked that button and pushed this lever. And I'm like, ah, I'd rather have a life. I stink. I don't want them. I stink. But any you on TikTok. You got to get on TikTok. You know, much, you know how much money this 12-year-old made on TikTok just showing his clit? I'm like, all right. I hate TikTok. TikTok I, is... I, there's nothing on earth I hate more than TikTok. I, I fucking hate it. I want, every, I want to smash everyone's phones on TikTok. Yeah, but uh, but let me get to this Ethan so Patter, Simmons Patterson Patter. business. So he's talking about whatever lab he worked at at, at you know Delta or wherever, mm. and he said there's poo. The thing they discovered there's poo everywhere. I knew that. Winnie everywhere. 
<laughs> he said like little particles. He's like on the table at the cellar here. Of course. On your shoe, the piano, the camera, my wife's tits. Sure. Just poop particles everywhere. Yeah. I, no, well, that, that's known. They said your, your keyboard is, is dirtier than a, a whore's dick. I'm talking poo, though, not germs. Literal shit. Feces. Yes. They took a cotton swab on a subway pole, and it, it was like semen, miscarriage, placenta, feces, urine, B.O., uh, jelly, grape, tomato, everything. I, I don't quite understand how it works. He's like, that's like molecule. It's not like there's just shit smeared all right. across your TV screen, but there's like the poo particles get in there. So you go down there, you take a shit, and you wipe your ass, and it just floats and grabs onto you and then you go and you you shake a baby and then the baby has it in their diaper or whatever yeah that's why you can't be purelling all day long you need a little boom boom in your system because it's got to learn how because you're going to be dealing with a lot of shit in the upcoming years so your body's got to know how to deal with that you know think about it you wipe your ass maybe mm. you get a tiny little morsel of dookie right on a on a thumb then you do one of these. All right, what are we doing here? And now it just, it's right it, here. It jumps? It Well, it got to the thumb, and you put your thumb down. Now it's on here. So is it no longer on my thumb, no. or did it split in half? Split in half. We split the atom. And then I do this, and then I go, all right, what's shaking? Now I'm snorting, I'm snorting poo-poo. Jim snorting, but it's got to be a tiny little fraction of a, a fraction. fraction. It's so, a shit fraction. This is what I don't understand about germs. And I allude to it in a bit, but I'm like, so... Let's say there's a poo particle. It's on the top of my, my hat. Yep. You I pick up my hat. It. So now it's on this thumb and finger and still the hat also? Oh, yeah. And now I put it through my hair. Now it's in my hair. I mean, how yeah. often can we spread this one particle? I mean, how many particles are inside the particle? Farticle. Not a lot, but that's his point. You, you, we're not licking up. Uh, we're not like an asshole every time we go to the diner, but you're getting a molly, and you're also getting other shit. You're getting a, a caveman dung. You're getting a Kathy Bates freckle. Like it's all we're all one, and it just keeps smearing everywhere. Does it eventually yeah. die? Does it does it leave? It must have run out eventually. It must have run like out. If eventually. I go like this, eventually it's like a stamp. It runs out of yes. Ink. But here's the thing: we keep on. Shitting. We keep pooping. Yeah, I'm pooping uh, like like lightning. Yeah, the cat's twitching. That's... Like, uh, wow, like Muhammad Ali over here. But I think this thing's not healthy. No, it's full of shit. That's it's. Uh, I think it's. I think it's, it's a bad news bears. Another thing. cat perk. You got a dog, you got a potty train a dog. This cat is is uh, embarrassed by its own turds. So you get you get the training out of the gate. He does it. He's already trained. He wakes up trained. It's in the it's in the Bible? biology. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah no kidding. Wow, yeah. How about that? Well, anyways, there's poo everywhere, and uh, I don't know what it means, but I I've, we've talked about this before. Probably, I'm not a germ guy. No, if I take a shit. And wipe my ass, I wash my hands. There you go. Frequently, that makes one of us. I take a piss. <laughs> I don't know why. I just go, whoop, zip up. And, you know, Phil Hanley comes in. I have to oh, jump in and take man. a bath. He's a psycho. You got to put on a hazmat suit. We got to spray down the whole chemical peel, uh, fucking Silkwood shower. He's a germaphobe. What do you think about this? Don't you think this is an interesting analogy? Mm. Maybe you don't. I don't want to persuade you before. Okay. I went to um, Jason Canner, who happens to be a germaphobe. Is he really? Oh, yeah. Big time. Wow, he but hides then, it well. Then he fucks like crazy. So yeah, you see? It's all pipes. pipes. Uh, so Jason Canner, he's a germaphobe. His dad is a, is a dear friend of mine, Fred, who's a bit of a germ guy himself. But he's a gambler. He's like a professional handicapper, horse wow. racing sport. That's all he's done for years. Horrible, horrible quality in a father. You don't want your dad to be a pro gambler. Well, that's for uh, Jason Gander to say, but... uh, It's like your mom running a brothel. I don't know. It's a little dicey. Yeah, it's a little... Well, it worked out for Pryor, and... He seemed happy. Yeah, he did well. Sure. Where's he now? He got a little shaky, but... You got that right. um, So one time, I went to the horse track, the Sport of Kings, with Fred Gander, which that's a sport that just... They call it the Sport of Kings. It was the number one sport in America. Now it's like garbage. There's four people with a limp at one race. Yeah. Degenerates, except for the Kentucky Derby. For some reason, that one has still got some sophistication. It's got a lady with a big hat and a fat guy with a mustache. But that's more of a thing. None of those people are going to another horse no, race. No, it's an event. Uh, so, anyways, 
I went to the horse track in Cleveland, which I think is gone now, and we spent the day there. And he's got the forms and the other form. He's got weather.com. He's got, you know, Grinder and the Jägermeister app all pulled up. Ah. And he's, he's doing all this stuff. And I'm going, hey, Prickly Pete, that's the name from the thing. Ah, 50 bucks on this one. This one's the biggest odds. I'll add that 10 bucks. And I said to him, how... How much better are you? What are the chance? How much better off are you than I? Right. And he's like, "Well, I'm taking an educated guess, but your guess is as good as mine, really." Sure. He's just taking an educated guess. I'm bringing it back to germs. Ah. I know all these canners and the Hanleys. They wash, they purell, the whole thing. And I'm like, I haven't been sick in three years. Like, how much better off are you than me? Yes. What's I, the percentage? I it feel feels similar way. to the horse race. I, I'm, I'm not washing my hands nearly as much. I'm just picking a name. Yeah. Well, that's interesting you bring that up there, Sloppy Jalopy, because we used to play a poker game at my college house. I lived with five guys. We'd have 20 guys come over. We'd get drunk and play poker until the sun came up. And there was always a new guy. Mm-hmm. Hey, we got uh, Ralphie over here. He doesn't know hey, how to play poker. He's going to, you know, we're going to take this fucking uh, Rook's money. He's about to get screwed and bamboozled. He shows up. They would always win. Hmm. All the new guy. Then he would come back next week, lose it all. Right. It's kind of like people's first set goes yes. well, and then they start bombing like a bag of turds. Exactly. There's something about just diving in and not thinking about it. That's the real zen. That's the. That's why I think I think black people are good at a lot of stuff because they know how to just turn it off. You got honkies out here analyzing mm-hmm. and debating and reading books. They just dance. I'm sitting there going, is this a good move? Do I look stupid? They just feel it. Right. They got the feel. I see what you mean. Sports too. Boxing. I used to box with this guy, and he was black, and he would go, you got to just turn your brain. You're thinking too much. And he would just be like, feel it. Go in. I was like, I can't. I'm a cracker. I got nothing. That's like Tracy Morgan. He's like, he's like, he's too much writing. What are you writing over there? (laughs) He's like, stop writing. He threw a guy's notebook out the window. He's like, just go up there. There's a balance, though. There's a balance. You know, you you also got to take care of your kids and pay the bills. And you want to cut a rug. But there's a balance. Sure, you got a balance. But uh, the germ thing, it's so interesting because it's like you spend so much time. Like, they won't open a door handle. They'll, they take the paper towel and they open it, or they wait for someone else. They hold the door with their foot, and they they don't, you know, they wipe their ass twice or whatever. You purell the whole thing. Yep. They're like, you're gonna eat food without washing your hand. I'm like, well, I got a fork. I'm gonna use a fork. Yeah. And yeah. even that, I'm like, I drop food on the not on the floor necessarily, but on the table. They're like, sure. you just ate right off the table. It's all. And I go, I'll, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. It's, well, first of all, it's a little selfish. Just kicking the flusher. Now you're, you're you're fucking over the guy who uses his hand. Now right. you're putting germs on the flusher from the bottom of your dirty, disgusting hoof. Right. But it's all window dressing, Jerry. I, what is window dressing? I think it's you put the things up. You know, a shutter. Uh, I don't know about a, a shutter. A blanket. Don't you think? A shutter to think. I don't know. But either way, we'll figure that one out. But A sticker? I think it's a lot of control. I am in control here. I put a paper towel in my hand before I touch the handle. Look at me taking control of my life. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, well, that's definitely part of it, which I got. I got. It's funny because I have OCD, but not the hand washing OCD. Right. I got the like, let me go step on the proper crack with the middle of my foot. I got to go back there and tap it, all that bullshit. But see, that's cool because that's already labeled a disorder. Like, I can just write that off and go, oh, he's got a disorder. Yes. This is also a disorder, but they think they're, it's almost like, uh oh, you ready for this? Oh, boy. It's almost kind of like a wokey activism thing. What you're doing looks good on paper, you think you're helping people. But you're actually hurting. Hmm. The same way you're hurting your immune system with the germs because you're weakening it, you're actually hurting maybe these minority groups with the thing you think you're helping. Interesting. Let them grow. Let them learn. They're adults. They'll figure it out. So the hand washing. It's all for you. You're saying by washing your hands, it weakens you. Oh, yeah. You got to get those immunes, baby. Let them work. Let them fight. Let them train it out. You know, you don't want to coddle your kid, and then he becomes a grown-up. He can't ride a bike. Well, once again, it's a balance because it's like, it's you know, I don't go out there licking the bottom of uh, people's shoes, You'd although like it's to. a beautiful lady. I wouldn't mind. Sure. But I'm not, I'm not licking the thing. But when I get off the train, I ride the subway. I hold on to the thing, and then I get off. I don't run to the bathroom to no. wash my hands. I go, all right, let's do a podcast. Yeah, here, yeah. Same here. I would... I'm, Use these mics since '81. I don't watch them. We had, uh, you know, all kinds of dicks and Harrys in here, and you let it ride. I'm letting it ride, and some people are probably throwing up, being like, "You're the grossest person." And I wash my hands, just not, uh, you know, 
Before, if I, if I played frisbee or whatever or basketball, you get some dirt. I look. I'm like, oh, I got dirty hands. And I shower a couple times sure. a day usually. So. Wow. it's a lot of showering. Yeah, I don't know why I said a couple times. I shower uh, once a day. Baby shower. But here's the thing. is, uh, our, We got a pal. He's a Jewish fella. He probably gets sick once a month. I get Jesus. sick once a year. I just had it. We did a show. You know, I had a sinus infection. Well, you had claimed to have COVID twice. And that's, <laughs> that's three that's tr- very sick in a year and a half. That's true. That's every four months. I don't want to be a prickly Pete No, no, here. be a prickly Pete. You can be, I'll now, bet on you. That's three serious illness. Remember you had the show where you were dying and the yeah, other thing? Yeah, that lasted one day. It was a bug. Okay, well, And I got over it. Most that's people sick. would have taken a, a week off. I did, I did both shows. I'm I not got saying you're sick. not tough. It was, it's it's uh, impressive. I'm just saying. Okay, maybe more than once a year. Let's not shave down these six. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe more than once a year, but... Uh, he gets sick once a month. Sure. I get sick much less than him. He's washing his hands. He's actually cleaning his asshole, and he's, he's showering. I do none of those things, and here we are. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's standing in the way of achieving your goals? Figure it out with BetterHelp, folks. Look, you know me and the fat man are obsessed with Alan, our therapist. We'd be in the gutter. We'd be dead. We'd be weird or Jewish without him. He saved our ass. He's a good egg therapy. It just lets you know what's wrong with you, you know? Hey, you go to the gym, you pump some iron. Why wouldn't you fix your noggin? You got issues. Your parents are wacky. Your uncle touched you. Everybody's got something. OCD, HIV, UPS, whatever it is, you got to get on it. Why not? Why let the garbage pile up in your head? Get it out. Clean the system. Flush it. It's good for you. Hell, try it once. You might feel better. and It's like an emotional enema. It's all remote. Do it from the comfort of your home. Flexible schedule. Video or phone calls at your convenience. Get a good match. They'll put you with a licensed therapist who is right for you. That's key. It's hard to find the right cat. Better help is therapy for the 21st century. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help. Better help is professional therapy all online. It's fast. It's affordable. And now you can even send messages. You don't have to do a terrifying phone call. I know how you Gen Z twinks hate a nice, nice horn call. So get on the text and help them out. Yes, and if you don't like your person, switch therapists if they're a different race or something you're not into. They make it easy. Trust me. It helps to have someone outside your world to talk to. It's easy to schedule. It's affordable. And it'll take a load off your shoulders. Over one million people have taken charge of their mental health. Join them. BetterHelp has a special offer for Tuesdays with Stories listeners. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays for 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays for 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. Sign up for BetterHelp and start living a happier life. Why the heck not? We all know we're twisted. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Sheath Underwear, baby. You know we love Sheath. I did the Sheath podcast recently. Robert's a good egg, ex-veteran, huge gay. Big fan of the Sheath. I'm wearing them right now. I'm not even lying. I got a big handful of Norman package right in my palm there. And, uh, yeah, you put the, the, the shaft right in the front pocket pouch and the balls are securely scooped up in the old undercarriage and they're separated for once in their goddamn life it's palestine and jews out there they need a little me time so uh you got to get the sheet they feel good they look good they got lady stuff too my gal's trans she's got all kinds of stuff going on in her pajama bottoms they got brassieres they got it all they fit well they feel well and they look well Get on the sheath. We love it. And uh, I'm wearing them now. I I just threw up my other panties. I don't even wear uh, women's stuff or fishnet anymore. The idea for sheath came from its founder, U.S. Army soldier, Big Rob, during the tour in Iraq. Support this awesome company whose founder is a Tuesday himself and a big comedy fan. Check out our pod. 
Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESDAYS to get 20% off your first order and Sheath's Underwear's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESDAYS. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your cojones. You know what's big about getting sick and not getting sick? Here, you know me. about this? Nasal breathing. It's all nasal. <laughs> Nasal's huge. Nasal's big because you got the hairs and the boogers. Yeah. And that's why you're not supposed to do uh, <laughs> too much. Huh? You need a big bush. You know, the, the oh, nose trimmer. Oh, yeah. You can't go because it catches all yeah. the poop particles. If you breathe into your mouth, there's no filter I read. Yeah, It just slides sense. right down there like frog shit. You got to, the, the nasal, it's all, it catches. <laughs> yes, That's yes. what I've been reading. It's a web of lies in there. I got, I got crazy nose hairs and I'm proud of it. I got some Sicilian stems coming out of here. Let me see a couple. Let me get a little, I can't see you. Well, you know, the tilt. light. You give me the bad angles here. I don't know what your angle is. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, it's pitch black up pitch there. Pitch black. It's like a like a, a Greek's ass in there. It's it's horrible. But uh, I, I tell you, you, you shoot a missile in there, it'll it'll catch it. Oh wow, yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, you gotta have it. I like to itch my nose. I like to pull boogers out or whatever. But you need those hairs, those fuzzies. You yep. gotta breathe through the nose. I, I've been reading a lot about this. Jesus Christ! Speaking of nose, the cat just did a bold, fast move. Oh no, that was baseball. wild! Wow, well, oh, every time the with the pod, never does this otherwise. I swear to God, those back feet are longer than Veter's. Look at those. I things. know it's like a like a a tyrant. What do you call that? A uh, Velociraptor? Yeah, it's like a size six. Weird. They just popped in, popped Whoa. out. Did a turnaround. It was facing the other way a second ago. Yeah. This tail is a little aggressive. It's wild. It looks like a duster. Like yeah, I a... think it is. <laughs> it picks up a lot of lot of shit and spreads it around. Now, do cats get like a cold? The common cold? Is it sneezing? He actually has herpes. What? And, yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, conjunctivitis. You're kidding? No, no. He's a he's a lemon. You're kidding? <laughs> oh, jeez. I liked it. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. Great. What t- I have no idea how long we've been doing this podcast. This is a wacky one. Can I just say that to the folks at home, we've talked about it. I'm out of town. So we're recording four episodes in three days. Yeah. I mean, this is wacky Wednesday. But these are some of my favorites when we just go off into the uh, ether. I don't even know what ether is, by the way. Either no idea. Way. Ether Sutherland. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I have no idea what ether is. I pretend, and, and I'm still worried about window dressing, but <laughs> let me throw this at you there, fat man. I'm driving to Boston tonight. Tonight? Tonight. Well, I'm from there, sort of. Uh, kind of. And I got to tell you, we got this, uh, my manager had a big meeting with me, like, we don't want to lose you. Everybody's firing the manager, I think I told you already. Uh-huh. So they're, like, helping whatever they can. So I said, well... I'm going to Boston. I can't book a flight. I can barely count. I can't get it up. Can you help me book a <laughs> book a rental car? The kid's like, you got it. He's like their assistant. He's a whiz with the planning and oh. the events and the bookings. Love a whiz. Hell of a whiz. Jeez uh, whiz. So I go, hey, what do you think? He goes, here, I got your car out of Manhattan. Pick it up at 7. Drive out, so we're gonna do a. She's gonna do a pod with her friend. I'm doing shows, and then we're driving out at like midnight. I love that. I love feeling like you're getting out. I love yes. that. Get up, get out. I like it. I love a head start. Yeah, we're going to a wedding on the Cape. Ooh, the wedding should be fun. I got the suit in the bag, and don't you like a suit barefoot beach? A suit barefoot, I find off putting because well, there's too a, many uh, engagement photos where they're like, "Look at we're on the beach in suits," and I'm like, "Come on." Ah, I don't know. They want to do it on the beach. What am I going to say? Hey, hey, bring it inside, Queefs. I'm not saying you shouldn't go. I'm saying it's not my cup of tea. You're asking me what I think about what, suit, the, no what's feet. What's the problem? I, I like jeans, no shirt. I like shoes. I hate bare feet. I hate sandals. Sand. A man hoof. A lady hoof. Now that I want to put in my mouth. Wow. I want to suck on her oh, toes. So this is a lick man her foot feet. issue. I got a man foot issue. I, I admit see. it. The, the hairy knuckles. They're always it's pointy and wacky. I just hate man feet. Yeah, but even on a sandy hook? Well, Sandy, if you're in a bathing suit, bathing suit, no shoes, fine. It's just too kitschy. Look, suit, I no see. shoes. I see. Oh, come I on. Sunset? I thought you'd be taking a photo. Do you like work booths on a surfboard? 
<laughs> well, no, Wouldn't you go, what, what is this? That's uh, counterproduct. Well, this is counterproduct. You got shoes. You wear, a, you wear a shoe with the clothes. Do I go dress shoe on a beach? Come on. Sure. If you wear dress shoes, if you're dressed up. Uh, what are you, Hitler? You got all these rules now. <laughs> Not rules. These are society's rules. What? Barefoot. You know that that's wacky. That's why you said it. It's fun. It's fun. Fine. It's fun, but it's fun to wear, uh, you know, uh, oven mitts as hands if I'm playing sure. soccer. I mean, sure, because you can't use your hands anyway. I'm fine with that. But but I also am getting hammered in a, in a suit, which is against the, the odds. I know, but the suit, you want to get the suit off. Why, not, why go suit if you're going barefoot? Because well. you're just trying to be cl- different. You're just trying to be, well. hey, look at us. We're doing a thing. They're having a, a party on the be- a wedding on the beach. You got to wear a suit to a wedding, and I'm on a beach, so you get the best of both. Well, you got to wear shoes to a wedding too, typically. Not on a beach. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying you're saying you got to wear a suit to a wedding, right? You got, you, you, we all know that. Uh, yes, you can't go in a tie dye and a, and a clan hood, right? Nor can, nor can you show up barefoot unless it's on a beach. If it's on a beach, though, if you don't need the shoes, why need the suit? Because it's uh, you still get the symbolism of the dress up, but hey, we're laid back. I suppose, but I like a shoe on the beach even because there's crabs and there's glass and there's needles. Sure. I, I grew up in Nantasket Beach, so I don't know what from what. But okay, let me throw this at you. We, you want to compromise? I'll compromise. Beach wedding suit flip flop. I hate flip flops. So that's uh, a little bit better. Okay, I okay. hate clip clop, clip clop. Sure, sure. Bullshit. But okay. It is weird. If you're going to be on the beach, it is weird to wear shoes. Okay. What about the suit with the shorts, the khaki shorts, the I nice like that. short? I That's like that. something. Now we're getting somewhere. But I can still be barefoot. I know. I think it's just the feet are just gross. I I'll just hate a foot. Him. I'll tuck them in. Your feet are fine, I'm sure, but there's going to be someone there with a big, fat clomper, flat yeah, feet, yeah. a weird uh, tattoo, fuzz fur thing. Sure. I, I get you know whatever people want to do. Well, you know you can walk into the ocean a little bit, let it dray, uh, roll over the uh, toes a little, get that cold thrill. But you got to roll up the pant leg. I like right? a roll up too, fruit. Now I like the ladies with dresses and no shoes. That that licks my balls a little. See, I, I don't get these guys. There's a lot of guys like you. You're not alone. I've gotten yelled at for being shoe shoeless Joe Vincent, but I just think what's the big whoop? Just don't look at them. I suppose. I mean, you could say I gotta take my dick out. What's the big whoop? Don't yeah, look at my dick. You got a point. You got a point. Don't look at my. Uh, you know, I got a, I got a swastika on my forehead. Just don't, don't look, look at, at it. it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, look one, at my eyes. One is a private part and a uh, racial epithet. I'm saying a foot should be a private part. Ah. Well, then you're getting a free show with the uh, lady sandals. That's what I mean. That's, it feels sexy too. I get nothing out of it. Well, it's not, uh, it's not I'm not going to I'm not going to come, but it's nice. But some okay. are bad. But you some do see you do know there's bad lady feet and oh, good lady feet. Of of course, of course. So there's something to that. What do you think about a toe ring on a lady? Oh, what are we children? All right. Like, you come from Spencer's well, gifts? Now I'm turned on. But I like a uh, what's it called? The ankle uh, bracelet. No, the uh, not the manicure, yeah, a pedicure, polish. a nice oh, pedi, yeah, you know, pedophile. a nice French lick, Indiana, whatever it's called when they do the thing. Yeah, yeah, French tips. No, <laughs> uh, what is that? Frosted tips, frosted. Uh, hold flakes. on, I got it. I'll come up with it in a second. Tipitina. What it's is just a that? French manicure. Yeah, I think it's a French. I made. think that's not that great though, because it's just the white tips. Ah. By the way, my toe also, I guess I'm, maybe I'm projecting, because I got that middle toe. It's yellow and oh, thick yeah. and just, oh, my Same God, here. My, my toenails, you could shoot them with a gun point blank. They wouldn't, <laughs> they'd bounce right off. They're Ding! hard as a rock. Yeah, it stinks. Now, um, what do you think about the guy with the metal detector on the beach? That guy, I don't know you, what he's doing. You go to a beach in Afghanistan, Kuwait, um, at Madagascar, Argentina. That guy is there. F- Destin, Florida, he's there. I don't get it. And there's like three of them. You're like, how could there be more from yesterday? Every day someone's losing gold I in know. there? I know. And they think they're going to find uh, Blackbeard's doubloon from 1801. It's like, get a life, man. Get a job. It's It's such a funny metaphor microcosm of everything wrong with our planet it's like the most magical healing <laughs> spiritual thing in the world is right there that's a good point and then point. you're like maybe there's something under here like you're yes. carrying it. put it down whatever you find it's like we talked about last week if you can see it it won't fix it 
Whatever you're going to find in there is not going to bring you the amount of joy right. that you'd get if you put it down, took off your socks and shoes and suit, and walked straight into the ocean. That's a lesson for the kids at home. He thinks he's going to find some doubloon that's going to be worth 500 k and he's going to coast. Uh, everything is you, right there. It's you, out there. You got the coast right here. The coast. Coastline. My God, the cat just did another whack. Whoa, thing. Yeah, look at its own a, back. Uh, found it a little, uh, maybe got a flea going. An itchy spot. Good band, Red Hot Chili Pepper. Boom. Get that itch. Get it. Oh, my God. Oh, did we, did we lose the, the device? No, no, we're good. We're okay, good. Okay. I'm just worry about those buttons. But well, yeah, there was something I was going to say. Renting a car, going out. It's exciting. And just, you know, you hit that Connecticut traffic, but not at 11. No, what? Uh, not at 11 p.m. I'm we telling won't. you, still do, though. It's Come crazy. on. That's what's crazy about the Northeast Corridor. It's a nightmare. We do it all the time because we go up there fucking every eight weeks. You leave at 10 30, 11, 11 30, construction, one lane. You just always hit it. Yeah. But you, I got to tell you, you got to be careful with these weddings. Sarah's got a theory. This comedians that never came back because they had huh? like six weddings in a row. Some of these people, they're popular, particularly women, it feels like, because they have all the friends sure. from college. They're sure. like, they're just out of comedy. They're like, I got to take off uh, August through October because I got uh, weddings. I don't like that. I know. That's the problem. Yeah, these weddings, they're a menace. And, and people are getting married less than they ever have, and they're still a menace. I mean, you get into your like 30s. If you were a popular person, which you are, and, you're, and your wife is a popular person, which she is, you, you could have nine weddings in one summer. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, well, you're not even a comedian anymore. I know. Let's get some funerals going, people. What, what's up with all the weddings? It's, it's, it's scary sometimes. Well, we got to go to Hawaii. We got a big wedding. Then we got to go down to Calcutta. We got a big wedding. Yeah, the Calcutta wedding will get you. But I will say, I'm having a wedding in about a year, so uh, block it off. Well, you got to send me a save the date. I will. Oh, yeah. See, you're going to get that printed and the invitations and the suit and the shoeless. I mean, it's so much stuff it's a lot we went magnet magnet's not nice i like magnet can slap it right on the fridge it's Magnet's there cool. and then you go all right magna came lottie that helps magna carta but you got to do the save the day especially with comedians yeah because everyone's booked everyone's packed solid hey ho tuesdays of stories is brought to you by honey Look, we all shop online. Everybody makes fun of Bezos. And then when you get that package at the front door, we all go down on each other. What's more fun than a package? I love a package. I used to steal them off people's porches. I'm not proud of it. It was a different time. But you got to get honey. We all shop online. We've all seen that empty promo code just eyeballing you. You know, that empty thing where you go, boy, I wish I knew that 8196-Z6814 Big Dick Wally, whatever the hell it is, is always that code. You think, who is that guy? Who knows the codes? Who's got the inside scoop on the codes? I'll tell you who's got it. Honey, the search is over. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for discount codes. When you're ready to check out, Honey automatically applies the best one. What a great idea. Whoever came up with this is smarter than me, and I'm glad they exist. Instant savings. Honey has found its customers over 2 billion clams and savings. Supported by over 30,000 stores online, buy anything from tech and gaming products to beer and wine. Wow. Yeah. I bought a certain pair of sneakers and some jeans, and uh, I threw that promo code right in there, and it felt like doing a cheat code in Street Fighter in 1994. Remember those days? You're like, who knows these, these codes? Well, this is Game Genie, but for products. So you got to get on it. I saved a couple clams. It was all worth it, and it's just fun. You feel like you're beating the system. Screw these fat cats and... In Israel, here we go. If you don't really have honey, you go get straight up. You're straight up missing out for free savings. You got to get on honey. It's literally free. Installs in a few seconds. Save some dough and support this podcast. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Tuesdays. That's joinhoney.com slash Tuesdays. And get that honey, baby. What do you got to lose? Well, obviously, it'll be 2022, so we'll have some uh, head headway. But my 2022 is filling up. Roadhead. I got, I got March, April, May, all 
Okay, all right. Well, we better get on it then. I'm getting a mag. I like a magnet. Get on it. Get the get to save the date. Are we talking big? Are we going huge? Nah. A lot of comics? Or? Well, here's the clinker. It's probably going to be in New Orleans. I know. You told me. Sorry. Skin on skin is tough. <laughs> I mean, if I had jeans on, I'd hate it. But uh, there, there we go. go. It's a little better. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we're probably going to go to New Orleans. And look, we're, we're very understanding. If people can't go, I get it. But we're going to do it. try to do it on like a Tuesday, Wednesday Rent out a big house. We'll all stay in the house if we want. Uh, kind of like you do with the hotel. Uh-huh. Kind of like that. The That's wedding a big will be house. backyard. It's, it's a mansion. It's New Orleans. Okay. But I mean, what do you do? 100 people? 200 people? 50 people? Ah, well, that's a good question. Ah, I'd probably say 100. Uh, that's what you think. Uh oh. You're way off on these numbers. I'm telling you right now. Well, teach me. Teach me why. We one. went 115. It's the biggest regret of my life because you got people. And it, uh, some reason at the time you're like, wow, well, we got to go 115 because it becomes a bigger room because it's more expensive. Spend the money. And there's all these people I wanted to be at my wedding. I, it's like my biggest regret in my life is this person, that person, this person, comedians. And you just go, and then you have to make that cut. Uh, and you're a popular guy. The cut. Hate you got to be like, well, I guess Veter's out. Oh. And you're like, oh, whatever. You know, you have the people like that, the, yeah. the cuspy people. Veter's not a cusp guy, but I just wanted to pick him because it was fun. Sure. Well, but you're going to have a lot of cuspers. Yeah, I hate a cusp. Because you're like, oh, okay, I got Umar. We spent some time. We got mugged in Baltimore. Is Umar in there? Right. Is Chris right. Allen in there? Is Sean Murphy in there? Right, you got all these people. Right. And then you got your manager, agent. Are they coming? Ah, you got Esty. Is Esty going? No. Oh, I mean, she's gnome. Israeli. No, no to gnome. Uh, but, you know, there's people, things like this you got to think about. Right. And then, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, New or- I can't go to New Orleans. And you go, okay, I get it. I get it. So then you lose a chunk. That's what you think. But people want to go. You're yeah. a popular guy. Well, and also New Orleans is a destination. That's right. New Orleans is fun. Plus, you got you got your college buds. You, you got, got your middle school buds. Family. You got your comedy buds. Then you got the family. And she's from Mass, so she's got forty eight uncles and cousins. I that know are gonna come. the Irish cunts. It's a lot. So, just one fifteen. I mean, that was small. Well, there's a lot of people. I'm close with old school Boston people, and I'm like, I guess I haven't seen them in a few uh, years. So, right. but then you look back and you're like, I grew up with those people. Uh, yeah, it's tough. <sighs> I'd say two hundo for you. Two hundo. You're a two hundo. Plus, you guys do okay. Your parents probably have some cash. Mm. You got some cash. You know, you spend a little. Yeah, it's not even about that. It's just about who. Even with two hundo, you got to make cuts because the family alone, both the, that that's sixty right there. I know that's what's insane. I mean, I had think I had like thirty nine family members. Wow, uh, it was just like bang. Die of COVID. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll factor it all in. Who knows where we'll be in a year? Maybe we'll all be in Russia. Yeah, that's good. What? What? Ch- China? I, I don't, don't know. know. They're taking over. Say. I hear that. I don't know what it means. I don't know what that means either. Who but cares? Get it over with. If you're going to take over, just do it already. Yeah, I don't think they're going to take over. I think it's all this alarmist shit. I'm like, I look out the window. I'm like, I don't know. I went to the movies yesterday. Seems okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'll worry about it when I see a, a bomber jet going across with a little fucking Chinese writing on it. But that, that wedding's going to be something. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be off my ass, dancing around, skidding around. Relapse, baby. Yeah, we're going to get a brass band. There's going to be a pool. Somebody's getting pushed in. You know, it's going to be fun. We'll, we'll do a thing with Vita where we get the, you get the arm, I get the leg. We do that one. One, oh. two. That Woo. sounds great. I love it. I love all this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fuck in the bedroom, the yes. whole thing. Yeah, I can't wait. It's creaky. It's old New Orleans houses, all wood. Formal. Can I wear shoes? Shoes? Is that going to be okay? I know you don't like shoes. No beach, so shoe it up. Uh, I'll wear shoes, and um, it's going to be exciting. I can't wait. Yeah, very fun. So I'll send a magna, bag of hat, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll make it work. <laughs> i got to get the cat down there, too. The cat's going to be the ring bearer. The cat will be okay. It can stay here. All right. Cat's out. You Sorry, we're making a... cuts already, <laughs> puss and boots. Cat cut. Yeah. Cut, 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 <laughs> cut co. Cut me, Mick. <laughs> um, cut it out. Yeah, so uh, that'll be fun. You just want to get it over with, get the whole thing in the bag. You want it to be good. I, I like how wedding, when I when I was banging, you know, remember when you were like 15, 18, you go to weddings, ah, oh, forever and ever, the body of Christ. You had to sit through oh, the whole God. mass shooting, and then you had to go to the reception. We'd all get on a little bus and go to a reception. I hate, we're doing it all in one place. That's what we did. We had all, I mean, that, that's why I thought our wedding was first class. Great wedding. At a hotel, no church. 
fucking uh, fifteen minute ceremony. Yep. Not even yep. six minute ceremony. Well, Bobby Kelly can only be in the sun for too long and to keep <laughs> keep him wet like a whale. I mean, we had a, a an eight minute ceremony and then just <laughs> went right over there and then just cocktail hour yep. right into food dancing. No bullshit. No introducing the band. Oh, we got to bring out the thing and no speeches. Just fucking do do do. Yeah, and me and you were were cut from the same cunt. So. I'm at the bar after the ceremony. I look over. I got Ari, Stavros, Nate. I'm like, Vitor, Donnelly. These are my people here. Like, there's no bad hang because we got the same group, basically. Such a great group. Mackie, Griffin, DePaulo, Soder, uh, the whole thing. I mean, that was was good fun. Plus all the Boston guy. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Derek and the other guy. Just a a hoot and a hanny and a hoot and a nanny. It was just great. And I remember I fucked up because I show up and then me and the lady bang in in the hotel room, as you do, to christen. And then I put my suit on. She puts her dress on. We walk out. You guys are playing fucking oh, uh, early suit cornhole. Cornhole. I look like a cornhole. I'm like, hey guys. You're like, what are you? Do? You're wearing this. Soder's in a bathrobe, and uh, <laughs> you know his girlfriend's blowing the the waiter. But who's now a comedian? I know. I know. So much has changed. But uh, we yeah, got about nine just, X's that were there. We look at the photos. We're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wow. You're right. Oh, yeah, That's Sam, weird. everybody. Yeah, Beth Stelling was there, yeah. Oh, wow, that was wild. There's a great photo. Somebody took it of Nate. He's, like, talking to her. She's got, like, the bra straps down here. You know, it's that end of the night. Everybody's been eating, dancing, drinking, and Nate's like, let me tell you something. And it's just him leaning over. His tie's loose. He's got a little dribble and puke on his chest. Great time. Oh, it was so fun. I'm thinking about this. This is what I think about. What do you think about this? Tell me what you the spit on my face, come on my ass. Please. Because the wedding is so fun. It's the only time you get everybody you love all in one place. Yes. I got my I got Uncle Dale over there. I got Dan Bulger and Tom Dustin and Derek Walsh and yourself and all these people. Yep. You never get that again. I'm like, it's not to, unless I die, these people are never going to be getting together. That's true. I turn 40 next year. We're thinking about getting a big haul. Let's do Ooh. a big 40th. Only because I like people it. are like, shit, we got to go. They're having a big party. Because yeah. that's the only way to get people it's the together. Only way. You're right. Otherwise, it's just my mother dying is the next time we'll all see each other. Yeah. And even it, then, half the, you're not going to take a night off for that. I'll take a night off for a haul. A what now? You said you're getting a big haul. I'm saying a birthday haul. I'm I like a haul. My mother dies. I won't be seeing you. No, you got that right. <laughs> now, sorry, Deb. Uh, I've already seen your tits. We got it. But get the haul. You haul. Haul of notes. We'll get, we'll get a big beer haul warehouse. And you go, uh, you tell every one of your friends, hey, you want to do a podcast? And they go, sure. And then it just turns out to be a party. Yeah, that's not bad. We have a lot of followers, a lot of downloads. Yeah. It'll help your numbers. Oh, shit, my numbers. Because don't you want to have, isn't it funny? you got Henry Phillips, Greg Warren, oh, Chris Walsh, yeah. you know, John again. He missed the wedding. But whatever. <laughs> he was writing on a TV show. <laughs> I'm over it now. He's fine. But you and get all those. up another spot. Yeah, you get all those people. It's fun. So you got to like throw it. your own birthday. So you can go, hey, I got to tell Sarah, like, hey, here's the plan for my birthday. If you could just do it. Right, right. No, I'm into it. You got something there, fatty. Let's let's do it. Let's do a big party for no re big forty. Then we got two big parties. That's big, big. Because we got to get together more. We're all gonna we're all gonna look back and go, shit. We're seventy eight years old. He's got AIDS. He died of a uh, fire. We never hung out. I know nothing. I, I can I can just stop and close my eyes. I picture G- Gary Gullman and Nick Griffin on the dance floor. Uh, Where will you ever see Nick Griffin dance again? Uh, never again. I mean, Not it was once. magical. I mean, Ryan Hamilton cut a rug Woo! like it was a, a fucking soul sir. What is that thing? Soul soul soul, soul train soul train. Yeah, soul Joel. Yes, thanks thanks for that, soul Joel. Uh, and Ryan, <laughs> but by one point it was just me and Ryan Hamilton on the dance floor by ourselves. And I remember Lewis was whipping Nate around oh, on the dance floor. Yeah. Oh, it was a pile of tits. How about Veter's wedding? That was a hoot. And I had, out in Brooklyn on the waterfront, I had oh. the legless cunt. Uh, you had uh, what's her face, Sarah. Yeah, that's it. And. You know, Lewis gave that horrific speech. Oh, oh what a great time God, that was. That was a bad speech. Yeah. I got my engagement in the next day. I said, all right, Peter seems fine. I'll do it. That what was a, fun. What a different time. I don't want to get all misty and queefy, but uh, there was no political, no, uh, hey, hey, you're offensive. Hey, we got to shut this thing down. This podcast is out of order. This whole wedding's out of order. It was just like, 
hey, you want to get drunk? All right, let's do it. What, what do you got, the chicken? I got the fish. Should have got the chicken. It was just, it was a little lighter. Speaking of that, I don't want to go down a deep rabbit hole, but... Cat hole. I found my old camera, an old digital camera of mine, and I looked through some photos, and it was like me and DeStefano and Phil Hanley in Norway. But then I found some from a park oh, hang. Yeah. You know, I do the park yeah. hangs. Sure. There's a photo. I'm like, I want to post this and tag everyone, because there's a group of people that you would never see together. I mean, it's Legion of Skanks and Brooklyn Skinny Pants oh. all hanging, sitting in a circle. Everyone's laughing. We're throwing a football. That's, that's it's my like, point. I'll, I'll name the people after off air. I already can think of three. But you're like, this person with that person? I know. I know. What? Well, what changed? What is it? Because that photo is a clear line of, of uh, how much things have amplified and division and and uh, hatred and teams you're on that team i'm on this team what happened well i don't want to get too deep because then we're the guys talking about i just fucking I, thing. I, I, but no opinion i just want to know what you think social media i think is a huge I think you're part right. of it I think because you're right. there's people you see them in person they're just nice people and then you see the social media and you're like what what the fuck because i have it too because people are so extreme you're like are you insane with this? Yeah. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and you're like, I can't even talk to this fucking person. And then you see him and you go, oh, hey, what's up, Steve? How you doing? Steve Rogers is an extreme uh, yeah, yeah. right but, wing Nazi. But it, it, the seeing face, it keeps people in check. You go, hey, we're a human being in a society with social norm McDonald's. So, like, I get it. But the social media, it's all faceless. Even though you got that little cum stain of an icon there. It's still pretty faceless. This cat is doing a weird thing. It's going all in. I mean, this covered is, its head up. Can that you imagine? Weird. This is like the best night's sleep I've gotten in ten years, and it's just on a on a coffee table, lights out. I know, and we're yelling right in front of it. He loves it. He loves the commotion. Loves the yell. But yeah. I'm just gonna move your little pillow. There here. you go. Thank You're you. doing great. Um, Keep snoozing. Yeah, I think you see because I, I gotta mute. I mute people sometimes on Twitter on both ends of the uh, political spectrum Mutiny. because you're like this is a person I like they're sweet they're swell and they post stuff that you're like this is complete insanity I know you're right I, I went to the cellar last night and you know you look at the board you know you show up I love the board it sees mm-hmm. all the names they write it out in a little sharpie a who's on I love these people who show up and go who's on tonight I'm like you don't know who this person is Stop right. pretending like you know who uh, fucking Andy Haynes is, you know, right. you're just like, uh, Andy Haynes is a funny guy, but it's, uh, it's just a name on a board that you're going, oh, you got to go, oh, okay, well, I think I've heard it, you know. Right. It doesn't say Chappelle or Bill Burr or George Carlin, but my point is, I saw a name on there, and I go, oh, that guy, oh, man, he had some tweets the other day, and then I went, ah, shut up, and I walked in, and we talked for half an hour, and it was great. Yeah, that's the thing, and nowadays, what scares me is you get in trouble for being friends with people that have opinions. Right. They're like, oh, wow, Sorry. I see you mentioned that guy. Yeah. I don't know how you're friends with that. And uh, now we're too far in. We're going to get too all far right, into one. Right. This is more bonus material, I feel like. You're right. Like. You're right. We'll but, pull back. But there is, because not because I'm afraid of offending anyone. It's just this feels like a conversation that fans are tired of. They're yeah, tired of the yeah. PC well, and the cancel not, We're not even thing. attacking the cancel bullshit. We're just, it's just a, a friend thing. I'm That's just a saying. Friend thing. But that, that photo is, is a perfect uh, cummation. Yes, but I'll just say this. It, we've said it privately. It's so strange when people are like, wow, you're friends with that guy? This changes the way I look at you. And you're like, well, why doesn't it change the way you look at that person? Because mm. you know me. Right. You oh, know me as a good person. That's you good. know I'm a good human being. You love me. You've known me for years. You know who I am. Yeah, it doesn't go the other way. Shouldn't you go, oh, maybe that person's not so bad if he's friends with them? But instead they go, well, this guy must be a fucking that's piece of shit point. secretly, even though I've known them for 15 that's a great years. Great point. Which that's one is actually weird. more likely? That I'm a horrible cum guzzling a-, a hole that you just hate been, now, just or the other it? way. I've just I've just fooled you for ten years. Yes, exactly. Well, this person you don't know, maybe they're not so bad. Well, it's kind of like the headlines. It's like almost on social media or, or or in media to make a splash. You gotta go. This guy's a Nazi, and you go. Actually, he's a Jewish guy with a yarmulke. I know, but we gotta say Nazi. Right, it's big. Yeah, it's big, and it's the same with that. It's easier to go. You're a piece of shit. Then maybe he's a good guy. It's just it's more enticing for the brain to go piece of shit right yeah it's strange you just go all right well whatever we're all humans it's all pipes and uh and we're all gonna die one day we got to remember that this is all we're a speck of dust on a queef ball out in the ether and the dust has got poo on it you got that right 
Uh, there's an old Buddhist adage. When you get in an argument with someone, imagine them 200 years from now. Ah. You know, they're dusty. We're all going to be dusty. We're in the ground, and then none of this is going to matter. You know, you see those old photos of men in hats and women in these big ball gowns, and they're trying to catch the trolley. They're all dead. None of it mattered. They all said, oh, I farted that one time at the funeral, and everybody hated me. None of it. It all washes away with the sand. Barefoot. Yep. And that's going to come soon. You see this new climate change report. Forget about it. we got about three days to live. So let's go. let's go rape some bitches. Or men. Yes. Or boys. In young jail. young boys, whatever. Yeah, yeah shower. Uh, just kidding, of course. Yep. Boo, but boo, 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 no, I'm boo. with you. I'm with you. It's all specks of queef. So live your life. Do what you got to do. And be nice to people. Then what, what was that old meme I saw? It's a great meme. It really Some of these meme. memes are pretty impressive. Meme. If, I don't know. It was uh, an old guy on his deathbed. He's about to croak. And he goes, I wish I would spent more time tweeting. Uh, and you're like, boy, that really uh, brings it all together there, Fatty. Well, Twitter is just really a big garbage fire of AIDS. It's not good. I wonder if we should outlaw it. I think it should go away. Well, I don't know about outlaw. That's tough. We gotta. We, you can't outlaw it. Not outlaw, but just then get you're rid of fascist. it. Fascist. Just. It's just. You gotta, you gotta. We each have to make a personal effort to not be on it or be affected by it or part of it, which I've been doing for a while, and it, it really helps. It does, it does. Yeah. You tweet out a joke, and then you throw it in the other side of the room. Yeah, yeah. Post and ghost. Mm, I like that. That's not mine. All right. But PG. I went on. I uh, went to Martha's Vineyard. I'm with the lady. She's got big jugs. I do a proposal. We're on a moped. We're in the ocean. We jumped off the Jaws bridge. Woo! What a thrill! And then you go. I haven't tweeted four days, and nobody cares. No, nobody's thinking about it. I'm not thinking about it. You know, jump off a bridge, folks. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I might do that right after this. But, uh, anyways, this has been a fun app. This is oh, wacky, yeah. wacky All up, over the ups, road. downs, over, out, uh, cats and- out. And uh, I don't even know what day this is coming out because we're recording. Uh, maybe it's September right now. I know, right? The cat's been Cosby'd. I don't know what day we're on. Uh, Specs of Queef. Here we are. Oh, jeez, a lot of dough, a lot of text coming in. What, what do you got for dates there, Slop? Helium, Jalopy? Philadelphia, coming soon. That's coming up September twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fifth, and then uh, after that, the weekend after that, I am at. Mark Ridley's Ooh, in uh, hey. Royal Oak, Michigan. Love it. Love that club. The weekend after that, Bananas in New Jersey. Uh, so come out to that. And then I got Portland Helium coming up. I got uh, nice. Zany Chicago coming up. A lot of stuff coming. Wow. That's it's all very exciting. Killers in a row. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Let's go subscribe to YouTube. Joe and Ron on is on a, uh, what do you call that? Spotify? No, when you take a break. Hiatus. hiatus. We're on hiatus now because I'm shooting a uh, science picture, science fiction motion picture in sure. uh, Florida. So, uh, but we'll be back. So go subscribe. Catch up on that. It's evergreen. Go watch that and subscribe to my YouTube and join the Patreon. You got that right. There's, it, a, there's a new hot gay sets up there, which was hilarious and fun. We did a bonus recently. That's out there. Yeah. Bunch of shit, ton of bonus shit, ton, yeah. and we have like a TV show on there. I know it's a it's a it's a Tuesday network basically. Exactly. All right, I'm in. A, I don't know when this comes out either. We'll just say Albany nine eleven. Come on out, that'll be fun. West Palm Beach Improv. That's in Florida. Boy, that's a big, fat, scary room. So God bless America. Madison, Wisconsin. That'll go. Comedy Connection in Providence, that should be a solid one. Zanies in Nashville, Rochester, New York. Funny Bone, Richmond, that could be tough. Portland Helium, Brea in California, Laugh Boston, and uh, Vancouver, House of Comedy. And then the big one, the Buckhead Theater in Atlanta. God, I'm nervous. Let's try to sell some tickets to this theater. My whole career depends on it. We'll see what happens. The Netflix special is coming out in a month. Tell a friend, spread the love. Queef it up. Praise Allah. Keep it rocking. Keep it rocking. Comedy. Oof.